<clears throat> Welcome to chapter 16 of Memoirs of a White Guy. I said that very confidently, but I'm not sure if it is actually chapter 16. I can't be bothered to check, so let's just go with that. Chapter 16. Um, so yeah, it's Boxing Day. Christmas was yesterday, that's a thing. Merry Christmas to everyone, or happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. Happy Hanukkah. Honestly, I'm so uncultured, I don't even know what other cultures celebrate on Christmas. <laughs> then again, this is memoirs of a white guy. No one expects me to know. Okay, this is this is the most ignorant podcast probably going around and uh I plan to keep it that way. So um yeah, I mean it's Boxing Day today. That's a thing. I don't know why it's a thing though. Why is it called Boxing Day? I haven't I haven't seen a box today. I haven't unboxed a gift. I haven't boxed a gift. I haven't even boxed like a person. I just haven't hit anyone. I don't know. Uh, unless you're a furniture removalist or like you're moving house, pretty inappropriate title for a, for a day. A whole day to be dedicated to something that you, I rarely use, which is boxes. So, I mean, I, I'd probably use a crate more than a box. Uh, I mean, why would I use something that's less... Like boxes are way less structurally sound than a crate. So if I wanted to carry goods and then devote a day of the year to it, I'd probably make it crating day. So happy crating day, everyone. Enjoy the crating sales. Uh, hope you get some good 70% off. Um, did it, I didn't go to the sales today. I went. I think I went last year. I got some shoes, but I couldn't be bothered this year. I just have better shit to do, like sit in my car and ramble on to... I don't know why people listen to this. <laughs> I could have been getting sick, sick discounts right now, but I'm here talking to you guys. So, yeah, I mean, Christmas yesterday, it's a good day for me because as someone who likes receiving shit, it is one of the better days of the year, but as someone who doesn't like giving and being generous, it sucks. So, I'm pretty torn about what, how I feel about Christmas right now, but it was a good day for me. I mean, I received a pretty good haul. I got spoiled by my parents and my girlfriend and my family, which was good. I got, like, all the generic white boy gifts which I'm pretty psyched about. I mean, most most dudes would be shattered with a Lynx Africa gift pack, but I'm just like, man, I'm going to smell like famine and AIDS for, for days. So, no, really, you just smell like, you know, a 12-year-old boy. So I'm looking forward to smelling like a 12-year-old boy. I also got a couple of uh, Hoyts vouchers, which is movie tickets for people overseas, just a big tick. And I got a surfboard that uh, I am not skilled enough to ride, so... White boy starter kit complete, the whole package, which I'm pretty psyched about that. So I can just go to the beach smelling like a 12-year-old boy slash girl, and um, I can go see a couple of Hollywood blockbusters and look like a dumbass at the beach. So that's going to be a pretty sick summer. I'm all set now. And uh, yeah, I mean, on Christmas, it was funny. <laughs> this is a good story, actually. My my family, you know, they obviously know about you know me doing comedy and stuff, and they always ask me about it. And one of my uncles or relatives, or whatever, found out that I have a podcast. And he was like, oh, I've heard about you had a podcast. What's your podcast about? And I was just completely put on the spot. And it was one of the hardest questions that had ever been put to me at a family gathering. Because I'm like, oh, it's about, I was trying to explain it. It's about, like, I'm, I'm kind of like an asshole. And I just talk about what I do and I just like I'm a bit like it's a bit racist but it's like in a fun in like a not honestly it's about nothing he's like well, well what do you mean it's about nothing it's got to be about something I'm like no it's pretty much about like I'm the fact that I'm telling this I'm probably going to talk about this conversation right now that means it's about nothing he's like so what what are you talking about I'm like just my life like what I do during the week and he goes who the hell would listen to that <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, you've got a good point. That does sound shit. I mean, when you say it like that, this podcast is the worst thing ever. I don't know why you guys listen. If you're listening now, be ashamed, all right? Think about, look at your look at your life. Where's it at? Why are you listening to this? Anyway, I appreciate it, but... And uh, that was pretty funny. And uh, then... So what happened is uh, probably the main story from the Kijul Christmas gathering. It was at our house, which always sucks because you have to like... Dude, you have to organize all the shit. I hate having our house. Oh, it's starting to rain. So you can hear raindrops in the car. You might not be able to hear it yet on the mic. Anyway, uh, the drone story, okay? So 
there's a little relative of mine. I don't even know how he's related to me, I'll be honest. And uh, <laughs> I think he's like a second, a second cousin. Anyway, he's like seven years old, and uh, one of my uncles bought uh, him a drone for Christmas. And it was a pretty expensive drone. Like, it wasn't one of the little ones. It was one of the bigger type, really good remote control ones. Like, not really a toy. And he's seven years old, and it said 14 years plus on the packaging. I was like, oh, that's a ambitious gift for a seven-year-old, but I'm like, yep, so we put it all together, probably spent about half an hour putting this drone together, and then we put it on charge for another half an hour, it was a whole thing, and then he's, this kid's so excited to use his new drone, and I'm like, yeah, man, let's go use it over in there, over in the paddock, or the park next to our house, because the last thing we want is this drone that we've spent an hour setting up, and is probably really expensive, up a tree or on our roof. So we go out the back, and I thought we were walking out the back to go to the park, like taking the back way, and then the kid just starts flying it in the backyard, and I was like, oh, bring it down, man, we'll go to the park, and then it just, it's probably up in the, already up in the air about 20 meters, and it's hovering above the roof, and I'm like, oh no, worst case scenario is happening, it's going to get stuck on the roof, or in a tree, and then the drone kept going up, up, and I was like, dude, bring it. And, and this little seven-year-old kid does, has no idea how to control a drone. But I didn't want to just be the guy who snatches a toy off this seven-year-old. So I was like, oh, man, let's just just pull the, pull the toggle down and it will come back down to us. And it, it was like the whole family had come outside to watch the drone's first flight because there had been such a massive build-up to even getting it outside because it was a pain in the ass to build. And everyone was watching it and everyone's like, cool. Fly. It was like... It was like watching a NASA launch just go wrong. <laughs> so this drone's just going up in the air, and everyone's watching. You know, and it was like watching a car crash. Just you, like you can't, you, you don't want to watch it. Like you, you, but you can't stop looking. You can't look away. It was so good, but it's so bad at the same time. And this drone is just slowly disappearing into the sky. And by the time, it, I reckon about fifteen seconds later, it all it all happened so quick. The drone was just a tiny little dot in the in the sky and then you could see the moment that the drone ran out of range from the remote controller and just plot this dropped like free fold out of the sky and it's probably about 200 meters away at this point and then we all just looked at each other and me and all my cousins who were older we were just like yeah that's we're gonna spend the next hour door knocking for drones aren't we (laughs) and then we did we went and looked for it like down our street and we, we were checking all the rooftops and all the front gardens and we were knocking on people's doors going, Hi, Merry Christmas. Um, look, sorry, I know you're with your family and friends who you probably haven't seen in a year, but if you could just go check all the trees in your back garden for a red drone, that will be really helpful to us. <laughs> and, yeah, it sucked, and we never found the drone. So <laughs> um, I'll, I'll keep you updated, though, if we do get the drone back. I'm not sure we will. It's a very expensive piece of machinery, and someone's probably stolen it. Or, most likely, it's just shattered into pieces. We were expecting, we were like, oh, no, we're going to go out on the street, and there's going to be, like, a four-car pile-up, and just, like, remnants of our drone, and we're going to kill someone. But lucky, nothing really happened. Just the, the drone dropped out of the sky. So that was probably the most exciting thing that happened at the Kidual Christmas which really shows you, you know, how uneventful it was. Uh, <laughs> but actually, no, that's not true. This also happened, and it blew my mind. I am probably one of the luckiest people to ever be alive yesterday. I uh, cracked open my bonbon. I got a double bonbon. I got two jokes, two Christmas hats, and two toys. That is unheard of, okay? You don't, you don't see that. That's like finding two four-leaf clovers, or like... Seeing a Pegasus, okay? That shit doesn't happen. Like, if I told you, hey, man, I saw a unicorn, you'd be like, oh, really? That sounds cool. But if I told you, hey, man, I got a double bonbon, you'd be like, no, get fucked. That's impossible. <laughs> That's how good I felt when I rocked. I put on my double crown, and I it was, it was the same color, though, which was a bummer. I got two red hats. But, man, I felt like a king. I was, I was just sitting on my golden throne with my two toy cars, my two jokes. I got the same joke actually that I got that I read in my last video, the me and Lewis's video with the bonbons. I got the same joke. I mean, you know what was actually really funny? 
Because we're all just, like, reading the, out the Bon Bon jokes and then trying to... Like, it's pretty obvious to, to guess the answers. Like, I was like, oh, what would Santa be called if he was a cat? And then it's like, oh, Santa pause. And then everyone's like, yes, nice guess. So we don't really, we, we, we don't really treat the jokes as, uh, as jokes. We treat the jokes as trivia. But the little seven-year-old kid who was there, you'd read him the joke and he'd lose his shit. Over, like, just just wordplay. Is the rain really loud? It's raining quite heavy now, and I'm still in my car. I'm going to pause the podcast for a sec and see if you can hear the rain. <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, you can definitely hear the rain in the background. I apologize. Look, this podcast isn't going to be a very long one anyway. Uh, that's right. I'll answer some questions after this. Yeah, I apologize for the rain in the background. Or oh, go to an outdoor car park, Luke. I didn't, it wasn't raining when I got here. That's bullshit. I, sh- I could move. No, I'm not moving. You guys can just suck it up and hear some slight, slight drizzle. Actually, you know what? It's probably soothing. It's like that asthma shit. I'll just put my, the microphone right up next to the window. Hang on. For all you weird asthma people, if you don't know what that is, it's like this thing on YouTube where people speak really softly into the microphone and it's supposed to be soothing but really it's just creepy so um yeah it's it's where people speak softly if you didn't hear that so uh, i'm gonna put the uh microphone up to the windscreen and you guys for just 10 seconds can just get some sick soothing soothing audio oh i bet you weirdos like that what has this podcast become i just recorded rain i just forgot <laughs> Uh, anyway, all right, I'm going to answer some questions because today's going to be a bit of a shorter episode. I've done a few long ones in a row, so um, and also I've got some some stuff to do, and surely you guys do too. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. So I hope you had a good Christmas. Um, that's pretty much all I have to talk about with Christmas. Ah, uh, actually, I, I bought a really shitty shitty Kris Kringle gift for my workplace. That's about it. I bought the worst gift of all time. I bought. I just gave up when I was shopping. So I bought a book that was supposed to be, uh, it was called The Crappest Secret Santa Present of All Time. And the book just on every page listed something better I could have bought with the money. <laughs> what uh, I, would, I was sort of at the shop and I was like, oh, I'd hate to receive this. And then bought it and I, yeah, got voted the worst gift, which I'm pretty proud of. I'm going to try and, you know, go back to back next year. I don't know how I can top that. That's a really shit gift. I might just get a Lynx Africa gift pack or something. <laughs> All right, question time, because it's raining and it's just terrible audio quality. All right, Rowan. Hey, man, I love your podcast. Good stuff. I have a request. I'm loving the Harry Potter jokes here and there. Can you make some more Harry Potter jokes? <laughs> what? This is the thing. I read these questions, like I read them during the week, and then I forget what gets sent in. If you were in Hogwarts, what would it be like for you? Character slash house slash what would you do? and most relatable scene. Okay, if I was in Hogwarts, what would it be like for you? I don't know. I'd probably be like, I'd, I'd like to be friends with Fred and George and just play pranks and do, you know, dumb shit. I, I definitely want to be on the Quidditch team, but I'm probably not going to be talented enough. I'd be like Ron Weasley. I'd never make it. And then in year six, I'd just get like, drink a potion and get weirdly good. So uh, actually, he, he, that's the whole point. He didn't drink the potion. Harry made him thought he did. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, I'd be in... The, okay, so here's the thing with Harry Potter. I know for a fact I'd be in Hufflepuff, which sucks, and I know it sucks, and it's a... Because I've done... You know that website, Pottermore, where you can choose, like, you can... You do all the big quiz to see what house you'd be in. Every single time I've done an online quiz, what Harry Potter house would you be in, I always get put in Hufflepuff. Always, and I don't know what that says about me as a person. I, I like I think Hufflepuff's the boring one, and I like to think that I'm a furthest thing from a boring dude. But I was like, but now I just embrace it. You know, everyone wants to be in Gryffindor and Slytherin, and even Ravenclaw because you're smart. But I'm like, no, nah, I'm in Hufflepuff, loud and proud. So um, yep, that's me. What ca- what character would I be? Well, I'd be myself. Didn't you say what would it be like if you're in Hogwarts? Why would I be a character? So, yeah, I'd, I'd be myself. But if I, if I had to be friends with a character, I'd probably be Fred and George. Um, and maybe Neville, just so I can pick on him and give him wedgies and shit. <laughs> and um, if I had to hang out with a teacher, it would definitely be Hagrid. Just because I want to, like, 
Rides Griffin and shit. I'd, I'd probably just exploit Hagrid for all these cool animals. I'd pretend to be nice to him. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I'd do in Hogwarts. Uh, what was the... Was there any... Was there a further thing to the question? What is the most relatable scene? Probably Wizard's Chess, I'll be honest. Uh, that looks cool. And Quidditch. Quidditch is also the, the, the coolest thing in the Harry Potter world. Man, you know who I'd hate? And I'd probably, like, try and... If I ever, like, made the Quidditch World Cup... I would just fuck up Victor Crumb, man, that Russian piece of shit, I'd ruin him, man, I would just, just bludger straight to the head, just, or like, quaffle straight to the head, I'd even, here's how desperately I would want to ruin the match for Victor Crumb, how much I hate his character, if I was the seeker and caught the golden snitch, I would throw it, <laughs> I would let go of it and throw it at Victor Crumb. So, <laughs> no, I, would, I would forfeit the game just to smash Victor Crumb in the face with a little gold ball. That's how much he is the worst thing about the Harry Potter. I realise now I actually didn't explain who Victor Crumb was if you've never seen Harry Potter. He is... Oh, it stopped raining! Finally! Victor Crumb is like this guy, this Russian dude who comes in from another school in the Triwizard Cup. And then he's also seen again playing in the Quidditch World Series. Honestly, he's in it for like 10 minutes, but it's enough. It's too much Victor Crumb. Uh, <laughs> I hope that answers your question, Rowan. I mean, I didn't really make any Harry Potter jokes. I can't really make... You, you can't just tell me, hey, make Harry Potter jokes on demand. I can't be like, Akio, Harry Potter jokes. That's a pretty good joke, actually. <laughs> See, I can't just... Oh, I can. I clearly can. I'm very talented. Thank you, Rowan, for making me look talented. Harry Potter jokes, just like that. Um, alright, cool. That's that's enough Harry Potter chat, I think. Uh, what's the next? Yeah, you know what's annoying? People message my page all the time, tell me a joke. Tell me a joke. Because in my bio on Facebook, I have, I tell jokes. And people think that's a challenge. Like, no, it's not. It's just... Like, that's what I do. I do stand-up comedy, and that was the easiest way to write it in three words. I do tell jokes. And people go, oh, like, people mess with my page. Oh, bro, can you tell me a joke? Tell me a joke if you think you're funny. Tell me a joke. And I'm like, dude, why would I tell you a joke for free? Like, what do you do for a living? And they go, oh, I'm an electrician. And I'm like, okay, well, come to my house and do electrical work for free, and then I'll tell you a joke. And they're like, oh, well, what do you mean, man? I'm like, well, that's what I do. That's, that's, I tell jokes for money. I'm sure you wouldn't do electrical work for free. So come to my show or eat a dick. And, uh, it was good during the week. Some guy, I d did the usual. He's like, oh, you tell me a joke. And they don't go, hey, I like your stuff. They go, oh, you tell me a joke. Just that, that's all they send. And I'm like, what do you do for a living? And then he's like, I'm unemployed. I was like, well, okay, there's your joke. So <laughs> I felt bad for him. So I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> he was a joke in himself. So I didn't want to rub it in too bad, but that's really annoying, don't do that to a comedian, never ask a comedian to tell you a joke, and don't suggest jokes as well, people always suggest jokes to me, I've talked about this before on my podcast, they just go, oh bro, like mess with me on Snapchat, I've got the funniest idea for a joke, and you're like, really man, really man, yeah bro, my cousin, like, oh my god bro, my cousin and I were drunk as last night, and uh, <laughs> he, he munted on the floor of a nightclub, and bro, you should talk about that on stage, and I'm like, really? You really think I should... Okay, all right. Please welcome Luke Kidgel to the stage. Hi, how you going, guys? So, um, <laughs> this guy I do not know at all messaged me on Snapchat, and I thought I'd just give this a go. So, his cousin, right? <laughs> Get this. His cousin got so drunk at a nightclub that he munted on the floor. So, it's pretty funny, isn't it? And the audience goes... <laughs> oh my god, this is the best comedian ever! And I'm like, oh my god, thank god, thank god I took that guy's advice on Snapchat. I would have bombed if it wasn't for him. And um, so yeah, you know what, man, I take back what I said. Thank you so much for that sick advice. Um, definitely gonna, that's gonna be in my show next year, guys. So, uh, yeah, I've already, I just burned some material for my show then. Ugh, what a bummer. Oh well, still come to my show. Um, I'll be talking a lot more about that guy's cousin who got fully munted at a nightclub. It was the sickest story. I don't know him, but it's just a story so good on its own. So, <laughs> alright, I'm going to keep answering questions now. Now I'm just getting mean. Um, this one was from someone on Snapchat, so I forget what their name was. But, um, it says, what are your dating deal breakers? Uh, that's a good question. My dating deal breakers. I mean, I think the... Main one would be sense of humor, definitely. Like, I, I mean, I don't date 
by the way. I've, I've been in a relationship for three years. So these are my, like, what I look for in a girl deal breakers. So, uh, yeah, with my girlfriend at the start, I was like, man, I pretty much, yeah, they have to, they don't even have to be funny. Like, like they don't have to be funny, funny. They just have to make me laugh and also be able to find things funny. Like, you don't want to, like, you don't want to, you don't want to start dating a girl three years down the track, you send her a fresh meme and she's like, I don't get it. And you're like, bro, what? It's, it's a, it's Kermit, man. Kermit's wearing a hood. And it, what what is there not to get? And you're like, she's like, I don't know. I don't find it very funny. You're like, that's fair enough. Yeah, that's a pretty shit meme. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's the main thing. You girl with a sense of humor. Girl who can have a laugh at herself. Um, someone who's just cool to hang out with, pretty much. That's that's what I look for in a, in a person. Just, I don't really know. And I think people get too hung up on like, oh, I want a person to have the same interests as me. Like, we have to like all the same movies, all the same TV shows, all the same music. And you're like, nah, that's means it will get boring. Like, yeah, it's cool. You've got a lot to talk about at first. And then really want someone who you get along with. Like, me and my girlfriend, we don't have exactly the same taste in movies. But there's still... Lots of shit, we, you know, we, we watch a lot of TV shows together and stuff, but it doesn't mean, like, when she puts on The Proposal with Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds, it doesn't mean I have to get into it. And that goes vice versa. Like, when I put on, I don't know, Die Hard and shit, actually, who am I kidding? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that much of a manly dude. But when I put on um, The Notebook, it doesn't matter that she she cannot like it. It's just, that, that movie's just for me. It's just me and Ryan, and she's and my, and my girlfriend's just on the couch next to me. Just you know, she, she can be on her phone. I don't care, um, as long as I enjoy the kiss in the rain. Honestly, I haven't seen the Notebook, so <laughs> that's all I know about the film. That they kiss in the rain, and he pretty sure he builds her house or some shit. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, my dating deal breakers. I don't really have a deal breaker. Like, okay, say like, I didn't really answer your question at all. I just said what what I look for at a girl. My deal breakers would be like. If a girl rocked up with, like, uh, like, if she, say, if she was, like, rocked up and she was breathing fire, like, she was an actual dragon on the first date. Yeah, that's one thing. I wouldn't date a dragon. I wouldn't date... They have to be, like, a human girl for me. And I know, and I know that's asking a lot. I mean, not usually, are people like, oh, Luke, you've been a bit, a bit conceited, aren't we? You, they're not all human women. But, you know, that, that's just what I like. I like the human girls. Um, no dragons, thank you. Uh... Sorry, dragons out there, but you ain't gonna... Okay, I can't be bothered. Um, <laughs> my dating deal break is... Okay, honestly, I probably wouldn't go for, like, a full goth chick, to be honest. Not really my my scene. I mean, I, and a girl with a bigger dick than me is also not cool. So, lady boys are out. And also, probably someone similar to my age. So, that's that's a good thing. Because, um, you know, you don't want to go hunt... You don't, you don't want to go scouting at preschools. But, okay, that's this is getting inappropriate now, and I'll stop, and I'll move on to the next question. Those are my dating deal breakers. To sum it up, no dragons, no girls with bigger dicks than me, and no preschoolers. Boom, three deal breakers. Okay, moving on. Uh, <laughs> uh, last question is from Eccle. Uh, Hi, Luke. My name is Eccle. It's Scandinavian. Man, that's my name backwards. His name is spelt Luke backwards. So that, does that mean that your name's Luke in Scandin in Scandinavian? Like if I went over there, people would be like, "Oi, Eckel, that'd be cool." Anyway, I'm 19 and very passionate about my sport, which is 800 meter running. I mainly compete with my friend Sewell, who is 22. The problem is that he always beats me at running, and on top of that, he is so much taller than me. How do I learn to get over my jealousy so I can focus on my sport? Are you getting jealous at his height, or that he's better than you at running? <laughs> you're not specific. If you're jealous of his height, that's weird, because just you're, you're born with what you are. You are what you are. You shouldn't be ashamed of your height. Um, well, this is actually interesting, because I was an 800-meter runner myself. I uh, made it to state. Like, I was pretty good. What's your, what's your best time, Eckle? But Mine was... Um, I was pretty quick. My best time was one fifty eight in the eight hundred. I don't know how quick you do it, but um, or your friend so well. Your friend would probably beat me, but I hope I'd have Eckle covered. Uh, that's funny, man. Your name's Luke backwards. I can't stop thinking about that now. Uh, he the problem is he always beats me at running, and on top of that, he's so much taller than me. So what are you jealous? I'm assuming you're jealous of him about the running, not the 
how do I get over my jealousy so I can focus on my sport? I reckon you're just jealous of his height, mate. Take some hormone pills, take some testosterone, and you'll be bigger than him in no time. Um, <laughs> but if you're jealous of him, I think don't think you should be jealous of someone who's better than you, man. Just train harder. He also, he's got three years on you, so you, if you got you train hard for another three years, chances are you'll be better than CL. That's what running is. And also, height's not a not a massive. Uh, I don't reckon height's a real big problem in running. People always say it is. I was lucky. I was kind of naturally tall and had a good build for it. But there were guys way shorter than me who were beating me. So really, I think it's about how much time and de- dedication you put into the sport. And that's like anything. How much time you put into music. You'll be better at guitarist if you play all day. You'll be better at you know comedy if you do it all the time. You Same with running. You're better at basketball if you sit in front of a hoop and shoot all day and play like four games a week. You know what I mean? Like the more you do something, I don't think you should... Yeah, the pro- the point is, uh, you shouldn't be focusing on your jealousy, man. There shouldn't be any jealousy. Just get over it. I don't know why you're jealous of this guy. Just train harder than him. Use him as a as a you know motivation to go out there and every time you run, be like, oh, I'm gonna beat CL. I'm gonna beat. I don't know how to pronounce your friend's name, but I'm gonna beat my mate who's 22 and taller than me. And while I'm running, I'm also gonna go home and grow a bit. Uh, I don't know, just to compare dicks maybe and see if you see if his dick's taller than yours. And if that's so if if that's if yeah, if, if Sewell's got a bigger dick than you, he's taller than you and he beats you at running, uh probably just kill yourself, man. That sounds shit. So <laughs> but if you've got a bigger cock than him, just train hard, hard as you can, and um really at the end of the day, I think you, there'll be nothing to be jealous over because you'll be smashing him. Alright, I hope that answers your question. Uh yeah, I mean I just just think I just think you've got this mate. I believe in you. Okay, get out there. If you if you wanna email me back, you know, different types of training, I can let you know. I think an important thing to do is running as well is consistency and what you eat is really important. Dieting is good. I've completely let that go. I still run but my diet is shit Uh I'll answer all the other questions next week. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. I've got to head off and um Keep joining my mailing list because the tickets will be out soon for my show. Uh, what else? Keep sending me questions uh, at luke.kidgel at gmail.com. Uh, the mailing list is on my website, www.lukekidgel.com. All pretty basic shit, really. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Hope you had a merry, merry Christmas. And I promise next week's podcast will be of a higher standard of audio quality and content and won't be containing any reference to me picking up preschoolers. Thank you very much. Bye. Hope all you asthma freaks enjoyed that one.